Things are ticking along nicely in both the league and our European journey. Let's continue it against Valarenga and Leeds United. Following on from our last episode, the next game was an away tie against Shrewsbury Town in the League Cup third round. Of course, we got beat. 2 2 in normal time. Bastian Stelvagen for us got sent off four minutes in, so we were down to 10 men for pretty much the entirety of the game. Annabel Zorati has scored a 91st minute equaliser to take at the penalties. And then Sokolov and Hudson missed two, and we're out of the League Cup. The holders are out on the third round. We bounced back. Brilliantly, a 2-0 away win against Liverpool. Walter Delonzo and Alan Belzorati with the goals in the game, which was pretty even. We didn't. This wasn't a smash and grab. We fully deserved the win. Next up was our most difficult tie in the Europa League, <laughs> Europa Conference League yet. A 2-1 home win against Vitesse. Victor Hugo Cruz and Frankie Grand with two goals within two minutes of either half. And then Giz Koopman got a goal for them in the 66th minute to make it interesting. But we won in the end. We then smashed Norwich City 3-0 in the Premier League. It was a pretty even game, to be quite honest with you, but Annabel Zarate's brace and Vitaly Solokov's uh, goal in the 32nd minute gave us a 3-0 win. And finally, it was a home tie against Wolves in the Premier League, and we won 4-1. Luis de Cordova, David Nuno, Rui Rea, and Vitaly Sokolov with the goals for us. Tom Applegate with the goal for them. And that sees the Premier League table looking like this. We currently sit in third position, only three points off. Manchester City sitting in the top of the table, but we are only two points clear from Barnsley in eighth position. So by no means are we looking comfortable in the top four, but it's been a pretty fantastic start. And one of the main reasons for the good start has been Annabel Zaratia, and averaging a 7.71 in the Premier League. Despite not scoring that many goals, he's only got three goals and five assists in the nine games that he has played. But he is proven to be absolutely wonderful, and I'm very much enjoying him. And if we can continue to get the best out of him, maybe, just maybe, we might fight at the top of this league. But as I mentioned earlier, we will be playing a Valerenga away from home in the Europa Conference League. Not the Europa, I wish it was the Europa League, alright? I'm just going to say Europa League, because let's pretend that's what it is. And Leeds United at home in the Premier League, who currently sit in 7th position. Now, in terms of our starting eleven, there has been a change, I think, permanently. Korobov has come in at left wing back and done far better than Radek Rada has been able to do. So in, in his seven Premier League games, he's averaged a 6.9 over that course of time. I've given Korobov a couple of starts. He's averaging a 6.83, but that does include three substitute appearances. And if we have a look at his previous five games, he's currently averaging a 7.56. So I think the more attacking option is something that just suits our player style a little bit better. So this will be the lineup for today's game. Stefan Polk, of course, a number one goalkeeper. Nuno and Bomba being our centre-half. Delonzo and Korobov as wing-backs. Buckle, Rui, Rea and Sokolov in the centre of the park. Cruz in behind Zaratia and De Cordova. I think this is our best first eleven, And they're playing pretty well right now, so I don't want to change it too much. First highlight of the game comes three minutes in. Zaratia whips the ball in. Sokolov can't quite get his header to it, but the clearance is uh, claimed by us and we go again down this right-hand side. Zaratia switches the play to Korobov. He's in the box and he goes for goal. And this is why he is starting that left wing back instead of Radek Rada. His first goal of the season, another assist by Annabel Zarate. He has turned into the creative force of this side and I'm very much enjoying him play. Korobov doing exceptionally well on his weaker foot to hit the back of the net. And three minutes in, we are 1-0 up. Now, in terms of our actual group stage campaign, if we win this game, we'll be three points clear at the top, assuming Vitesse also win theirs. And looking towards the next episode, if it looks like we're going to be uh, going through the next round, regardless of the results, I'll probably just play through until a couple of Premier League games instead of bringing the European ones. But if it is kept interesting by the likes of Vitesse and Valerenga, I, of course, will bring you the important European matches. So first half now has been pretty much dominated by ourselves, 76% of the possession with plenty of shots to go as well. Just a little bit more clinical is what we need. But well, uh, picks up the ball from Korobov out wide to Delonzo on this right hand side. He can't quite get his cross in. Uh, well defended by Valerenga. Are they going to be able to clear and pounce on the counter? No, they're not because Korobov is there to stop them in the tracks down their right hand side. And we build up again. Korobov all involved in the play, both defensively and in the attacking areas. But his strike this time wasn't quite as good. Only seven minutes to go in this first half. We win the ball in the midfield and Deco Dover's through. And he should probably do a little bit better with that. I wouldn't mind being 2 0 up going into the half time, please, boys. Two minutes to go. Buckle switches the plate to Delonzo. We've seen this time and time again. 
and Walter Delonso. I tell you what, he is coming on leaps and bounds his fifth goal of the season. A nice assist by Mario Buckle. I think that's something we see all the time in the match engine. The throw into here, the switch of player, and it is working to supreme effectiveness with Delonso on that right-hand side. And I don't know where he's got his finishing boots from, but I'm happy about it. There is going to be one more highlight in this first half. Valerenga are on the ball, but they give it away quickly. Sokolov plays the ball to Korobov on this left-hand side. He can't quite get past his man, but they also can't retain possession themselves. Sokolov to Buckle to Delonzo on the right-hand side. Can he turn provider this time? No, he can't. We reset the player as we often do with Mario Buckle in the defensive midfield area. Korobov, he cross does eventually come into Delonzo. <laughs> What's happened to Walter Delonzo? He's fast becoming one of our top goal scorers, if not our top goal scorer. Uh, probably not quite there, but he's getting pretty close. His sixth goal of the season, uh, an assist for our Korobov again. Attack and wing backs proven to be more effective in our system. And uh, we go 3 0 up at half time. We'll take that all day. Let's kick off for the second half. Look to get some of our youngsters on during that time. Frankie Grand and Branko Milanovic will definitely come on at some point, but we have ourselves a highlight straight away in the second half. Sokolov brings the ball forward, plays it back to Mario Buckle, who's pass this time isn't quite that great, and Valarenga can maybe... I mean, they're not keeping possession. I've re <laughs> have anticipated a counter-attack every single time, but they're giving the ball away so sloppily, and maybe we are just that much better than them as Korobov hits the side netting. 52 minutes gone, just before we make our substitutes, we'll see how this highlight goes. Rui Rio with the ball in, Deco Dova. His header should do probably a little bit better than that. We'll look to make our substitutes and we're going to keep Korobov on for now. I do want to take off um, probably Luis de Cordova for Frankie Grand. And I also want to bring on Branko Milanovic for Ruby Rea in the centre of midfield. We'll play him as a box-to-box -box rather than a ball winner. It suits his attributes a little bit more and it's a role that is more suitable for according to my coaches. Another highlight now, corner for us. It's played in. And Guido Bomber gets his head on it at the front port. Oleg Korobov, our left wing back, once again involved in the attacking player, getting the assist this time. And we go 4 0 up 16 minutes in. Another highlight now Korobov once again with the corner. And once again, Guido Bomber hits the back of the net. His fourth goal of the season and another assist for Korobov. So with only around 10 minutes or so to go, we will make our final change of the day. Oleg Korobov, one goal and three assists. We're going to bring on Radek Rada just to save his legs. As I said, as I mentioned earlier, he is going to be our number one left back, I think, for the rest of the season, unless we can find someone similar to him in Mould uh, who can come in and be a bit of an improvement. Zarate with a free kick, and that just tops it off. Annabel Zarate's eighth goal of the season makes it 6 0. And even though we are playing weaker opposition, you've got to admit we're having a fantastic European run. 6 0. That's all we need to say. And there we have it then, Valerenga nil, Stoke City 6. Let's go take a look at what that means in terms of the group stage. So Vitesse did win in the other fixture, so that saves us three points clear with three games to go. Obviously only having to finish in the top two, so we're six points clear from a qualification spot. Hopefully we can continue that form. We might not need to bring you the next episode, which will be against Vitesse. If it changes, let's just tweet a quick look at the schedule. So this was the game I was planning on bringing you alongside Crystal Palace or something. If by this point we're already qualified or it doesn't really matter, I'll bring you the Liverpool and Watford game. So before we get on at the next game and play against the Leeds at home in the Premier League, I thought we'd just take a quick look at how people are performing in training. And Lewis de Cordova has been absolutely flying up, giving permanent proper game time and proper training. He averaged a 10 this week. And he's really, really been flying up. Same can be said by Branko Milanovic. He's quite often the most effective trainer at the club. And I'm thinking maybe I need to start giving him some more game time over Rui Rea, who isn't playing phenomenally by any stretch. So it might be worth just chucking this boy in. Victor Hugo Cruz doing pretty well. Oleg Korobov has earned himself a new contract after the last performance and his training performances. So we're going to tie him down for a few more years. Radic Rada's doing well. Sokolov's doing well. Frankie Grand, despite his limited game time, is still improving massively, which is great. And just generally, overall, this squad has been really, really good in training. So for today's game, we're only making one change. So starting 11 from the last game, Milanovic comes in for Rui Rea, who is currently suspended. So that works out quite nicely. But I think I am going to start persisting with this lad. He looks absolutely phenomenal to me, at the very least. And if we compare him to Rui Rea, he's not that far off in terms of current ability either. 
as you can see, Ruby Rea is in the blue, Milanovic is in the green. Uh, maybe Milanovic is better right now. Obviously, there's some areas where Ruby Rea has him, but I'm thinking Milanovic is going to be the man to start for us in central midfield for the rest of the season if he continues his development and his improvement and puts in some good performances. But here we are against Leeds. They're playing a very similar formation to ourselves, just with the wing backs dropped back. Do they have anyone of our former side? I don't believe they have. I can't really recognise any names here. Yeah, it looks like a completely fresh side from when we were managing them, which isn't a surprise. That was literally about eight years ago. Let's get the kick off at home. Hope for three points. First highlight of the game comes six minutes in. We're on the attack down the right hand side. Delonzo to Korobov. Nice touch to De Cordova. And Luis De Cordova gets his ninth goal of the season. Once again, Korobov being involved in the attack on player and puts us 1 0 up at seven minutes in. Some good work by Delonzo and Zarate on that right hand side to retain possession. Delonzo's switch, lovely little touch. Why the keeper doesn't come out sooner, I do not really know. I know he's a very good goalkeeper as well if we take a look at him here. Christian Njoko, we were looking at him years ago when he was at Spurs, and he was pretty special. So the fact that he didn't actually come out and get that is a little bit surprising. But we have ourselves another highlight. Looked like it was going to be an exact replica of the first goal, but Korobov to Deco Dova once again. I tell you what, lads, I am loving how this side's performing and the players in it. Deco Dova's 10th goal of the season, his second goal of today's game, and Leeds. The fallen without a trace. Poor defending. They can't get their, clear their lines properly. And Korobov and Dekord over combining once again. And the first half has trickled away without much else happening. But we're going to have one final highlight before we get to half time. Korobov gets dispossessed down this left hand side. But thankfully, Mario Buckle is alert to the danger. Walter Delonzo picks up on the right hand side, gets past his man. He's taken down in the box referee. Get the penalty on the cards. It'll be uh, Vitaly Sokolov. Oh, it's not. <laughs> It's De Cordova who steps up to take it and he buries it, puts us 3 0 up. That's his hat trick, of course. His 11th goal of the season, and we are cruising. And there we are, half time Stoke City 3, Leeds United 0. Very pleased, lads. Go out and do the same in the second half, please. First highlight of the second half comes 49 minutes in. We're on, on the attack down the right hand side, Zarate to Delonzo, back to Zarate. So, I mean, it was a bit of an ambitious switch that, and he what didn't really come off, but Korobov does retain possession for us. And Milanovic feeds it through to Zarate again down this right-hand side. He whips it in. Korobov's back post and Oleg. I tell you what, this boy is a little bit special. His second goal of the season. His first goal of today's game. But he's already got two assists to his name as well. And we're making Leeds look like mugs. They're sitting seventh position in the league. And now I know we're at home. We've obviously got that advantage and we're in good form. But to be beating them by this scoreline at this stage of the game is absolutely phenomenal. 60 minutes in, we'll make uh, substitutes shortly, but we have another highlight. Delonzo can't quite get his cross in before it is pinched off him, and Ben Hur can bring it forward for Leeds United. He's in behind, he's completely done our defence, but his strike is just a, a little bit wide. So I do want to bring on Frankie Grand. We'll bring him on for Annabel Zarate, who's had a decent game without really getting involved in the attack and play too much. I wouldn't mind getting Selvagen on as well. We'll take off Delonzo. We'll look to take off Korobov maybe later on in the game. He's performing fantastically, so I don't really want to disrupt him too much. And time is just ticking away. It doesn't look like Leeds United are trying at all. We'll get Korobov off for Radek Rada for the final few minutes just to save his legs a little bit. And time is ticking, and we have it. Full time, Stoke City 4, Leeds United 0. Absolutely delighted with the performance and the result. So with that win, Caesars rise to second place. In the Premier League, Deco Dover is now on the top goal scoring list. So right here on the assists and on the average rating. Everything is just going absolutely perfect. We couldn't ask for any more. Hopefully the rails don't come off this too sharply. And we can continue with our fantastic, fantastic form. In terms of the next episode, then as I mentioned earlier, it might be the Vitesse game if it actually matters in our group stage. If not, it'll be the Watford and Liverpool game. So anyway, boys, if you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like. And if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.